start our morning service. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. We invite you to all come in and we're going to sing Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul this morning. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy, I'm telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. Born of the Spirit with life from above, into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made, when as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace it proffered, save me, oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now I have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when as the cross I believed. Riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I received. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul, filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, made me whole. My sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Buford, if you would please come and open us in prayer this morning. Father, thank you for the local church and this time that we're gathered together this morning to hear your word uh, preached to us. Thank you for the great teaching this morning on the Bible and the principles of studying it and just pray that you would use that for your glory to help people to uh, come to read and understand their Bibles better. And we just pray for the preaching that happens here today, Father, that you would bless it and use it also for your glory and that it would impact the hearts of the hearers that are here today. And pray that if there's anyone here today that's not saved, that today would be that day that they receive Christ as their Savior and be born again, and that there would be joy in heaven over a sinner that comes to Christ. And <clears throat> just pray for Pastor that you would help him to... Uh, be strong in the pulpit, give him strength, wisdom, and uh, help him to communicate your truth to the people here today. Pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. All right, let's try it again like we mean it. Good morning. Good morning. All right, that's better. I hope you had a wonderful week. Uh, I've been telling you, all, am I not a prophet? I've been telling you all year long. January is coming. Come on now, January is here. Hallelujah. Finally getting some decent 
Manitoba weather. Instead of this, this five-year-old little girl stuff winter, man, this soft stuff will make sissy out of you. Praise the Lord for this wonderful weather. Where's my wife? She's not in the room, right? Amen. <laughs> okay. Anyone over here? We have any visitors this morning? I'd like to welcome any folks for the very first time, new time, anyone at all? Okay, this morning in here in this section. Okay, it's good to see Jack's back again. Good to see you, buddy. God bless you for being here this morning. I don't think we have any other folks that are brand new, first time or anything in this section over here. Do we have anybody? Do we have any visitors this morning in this section? Help me and point if you can. Oh, it's good to see Bill back. Man, that's three in a row, buddy. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Good to have you here with us. Good to see you this morning. It's nice to meet his wife. And of course, Kyle has been coming also. Okay, I don't think that's it. Okay, that's two. Anybody else brand new? No, I don't think that's it. All right. Well, that's okay. It's us, and it's a cold day, and we're going to have church anyway. Please remember, next Sunday is Faith Promise Missions Sunday. Pastor Bob Wall from the Faithway Baptist Church and the Faithway Baptist College in, in uh, Ajax, Ontario, will be preaching and teaching to us all day. 9.30, he'll be doing Sunday school for the junior high, senior high, and the adults. In this room, it will be Bob Wall uh, from Faithway in Ajax, Ontario. And then also he'll preach the main service also. And then he'll preach the afternoon service. We'll have lunch. We'll have meat. We'll have dinner. My wife will make more announcements uh, at the end of the services about all of that. But um, let's, uh, let's be in prayer about what God would have you and I do to give to world missions. All right. Singing team, would you come back up and please lead us in a few more songs? Supper this afternoon. Please stand with me again as we sing Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Wonderful Grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountains, sparking like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise His name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching to all the lost. By it I have been pardoned, saved to the uttermost. Chains have been torn asunder, giving me liberty. For the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful, the matchless grace, the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, higher than the mountain, sparking like a fountain, all sufficient grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus, praise His name. Wonderful grace of Jesus, reaching the most defiled. By his transforming power, making him God's dear child. Purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity. And the wonderful grace of Jesus, reaches me wonderful the matchless grace the matchless grace of jesus deeper than the mighty rolling sea higher than the mountain sparkling like a fountain all sufficient grace for even me believe in me broader than the scope of my transgression 
greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise His name. Excellent singing. That's very good singing. Please be seated for the next song this morning. It's just like His great love. A friend I have called Jesus, whose love is strong and true, and never fails how e'er tis tried, no matter what I do. I've sinned against this love of His, but when I knelt to pray, confessing all my guilt to Him, the sin clouds rolled away it's just like jesus to roll the clouds away it's just like jesus to keep me day by day it's just like jesus all along the way it's just like his great love sometimes the clouds of trouble dim the sky above I cannot see my Savior's face I doubt his wondrous love but he from heaven's mercy seat beholding my despair in pity burst the clouds between and shows me he is there it's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. When sorrows clouds o'ertake me and break upon my head, when life seems worse than useless and i feel better dead i take my grief to jesus then nor do i go in vain for heavenly hope he gives that cheers like sunshine after rain it's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine of all his care and tenderness for this poor life of mine his love is in and over all and wind and waves obey when jesus whispers peace be still and rolls the clouds away it's just like jesus to roll the clouds away it's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Amen, amen. Please stand with me as we sing uh, two more choruses. We're going to start our choruses with Because He Lives. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He bled and died, to buy my pardon, 
An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the ride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's fight no more with pain. And then as death gives way to victory. I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know And life is worth the living just because he lives. And life is worth, thing, worth living because he does live. Let's finish uh, with our song singing this morning with Open My Eyes, Lord. Open my eyes, Lord, I want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that I love him. Open my ears, Lord. Help me to listen. Open my heart, Lord. I want to know Jesus. Open my heart, Lord, to be more like Jesus. Reach out and touch me so I can be like him. Open my mind, Lord, and treat me like Jesus. Come reach out and touch me. So I can be like him. Open my hand, Lord, and transform my spirit. Conquer.
conquer my will, Lord, so I can be like Him. Open my hands, Lord, to love more like Jesus, who reached out and touched men so that he could bless them. Amen. Thank you for your singing. Please remain standing for the opening of God's Word. How much would you please turn with me in your Bibles to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. We'll begin our responsive reading uh, in Revelation chapter number 5. We studied Revelation chapter 4 last week. And we reviewed that chapters 1, 2, 3 are all about you and me. 1, 2, 3 are all about you and me, the church age believer. And then chapter 4, the door in heaven was open and the rapture hit. And now let's continue on as we uh, visit what's going on up in heaven in chapter number 5. Let's begin our reading in chapter number 5 this morning. The I in verse number 1 is John the beloved apostle. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us, uh, us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. We're going to be saying that forever. Get used to it. 13, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Kind of sounds like church, doesn't it? People worshiping and saying amen and praising the Lord and giving glory to God. That's what church ought to be a little bit like heaven. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he who sits upon the throne, he that is worthy to open the seven seals, we love you. We bless you. We pray that all that we have sung, all that we have taught in the first hour, all that we'll preach now and declare in the second hour, And those who might trust thee, those who might even be saved today, know they're on their way to heaven. We we praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. Help me to be faithful 
to preach your word. Help me to speak to the hearts of the people. But Lord, on the other side of the pulpit, may the people say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. Touch my heart. Let the word sink down in my ears and change me because I came to church today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said? Amen. All right. So many people, they say they are Christians, living by tradition, but they'll never make it. Kind of confused about the biblical requirements. So many people trust in no religion, good works and confessions, their ticket to heaven. But those same people, they don't see the difference. Between what's right and wrong, Bible based or not, being born again or just believing in God, they've got to get their facts straight, call on his name, they've got to read the word in that. Will come. He loved the whole world, he gave his only son to die, make a way. All can be saved from death and hell. If you confess to the one and only Father above and trust in your heart that he'll be Seeds are sown, but they need to be watered. Nothing's worse than lukewarm, idle sons and daughters. We need to spread the word about the risen one. There's people out there thinking that they've got it. They grew up believing they were of the Father, but they don't realize he's not even inside. We need to go tell those who don't know what we know. Go and preach the word to every lost soul. We've got to spread the news like there's nothing left to lose. Oh, so go and let it loose. Salvation is trust in the Lord said, whosoever will come. He loved the whole world. He gave his only son to die, make a way. All can be saved from death and hell. If you confess to the one and only Father above and trust in your heart that he'll redeem you with his love. Salvation, it's more than just a way to live life. Salvation is Jesus Christ. Oh, let me ask you, are you his child, washed in the blood? Are you born again, or you just think there's a God? You've got to get your facts straight, call on his name. Oh, just read his word and believe. Salvation is trusting when the Lord said, whosoever will come. He loved the whole world, he gave his only son to die, make a way. All can be saved from death and hell. If you confess to the one and only Father above and trust in your heart that he'll redeem you with his love. Salvation, it's more than just a way to live life. Salvation is Jesus. Salvation, it's so much more than just doing right. Salvation is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Haley. Uh, is that one of yours? That's your original? You wrote that. That's awesome. Praise the Lord. So, amen. So, we're so grateful for that. If you'll turn with me to Revelation chapter number 5, and we'll continue our uh, series in the book of Revelation. Today's uh, message is called, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. And again, God uh, uh, jettisoned the apostle named John that walked with Jesus 2,000 years ago into the far-flung future beyond even right here and right now and today. 
And uh, he allowed John to see some amazing supernatural truths. Remember, the book of Revelation is not hard to understand. It's really not. It's hard to believe that it's true. Your flesh doesn't want to believe it. You want to look at it like you look at a sci-fi movie in Hollywood or something like that. But it's not. It's just uh, it's an amazing, amazing supernatural uh, future that you and I will have together with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so let's look together at verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Now, when I was a boy, my mother had a green leather-bound personal diary. People used to write on things called paper with pens um, years ago. And she had a diary, and it had like a seal that went around where the pages would flip this way and that. And it had a little lock on it. and had it sealed shut so I couldn't read it, but I knew where the key was. And I finally got that key open, and I was in first grade or kindergarten, and I opened that thing, and it did not look anything like the print-lettered block letters in school. It was this scribbly, squiggly stuff, and I had no idea what any of it said. So my mother's diary was still a secret to me. But the Bible says that there were seven seals on this book in the hand of he who sits upon the throne. Visualize this in heaven. We still have the 24 elders around the throne. We still have the four fantastic beasts, these marvelous creatures, supernatural creatures that are also in this same throne room. And we have the apostle John. Verse number two in the Bible says, and I saw a strong angel, not an average angel, a strong angel proclaiming with a, say the next two words, proclaiming with a, why don't you get loud, proclaiming with a, Loud voice. Get inside the scripture and see it for what it is. A loud voice. Strong angel in God's presence. And, the, and he says it with a loud voice in verse number two. And no man, um, excuse me, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Now, I... I I am, before I was saved, I was a loud person. Now that I'm saved, I'm a loud person. And now that I preach the Bible, I'm a still a loud person. Now, th there's time to be soft, and there's time to have that still, small voice speaking to you. But I believe with all my heart, angels are messengers, and preachers are messengers, and messengers are supposed to be loud. Because people are in a thick spiritual fog mentally. People are in a thick spiritual fog uh, uh, spiritually, and there needs to be a declaration of volume. You say, well, sometimes you can speak softly, and sometimes I do, but there needs to be some serious proclamation going on. And this angel is saying, who is worthy to open the seals? And messages need to be declared. You say, why do I get loud? Sometimes I get loud because I'm watching some of you go to the land of Nod. You're leaving church, and you're going... To the land of nod. nod. And sometimes we get there and I have to just, I kind of do that because I believe what has to be said. I'm not saying I deliver well. I'm not saying my content is even deep. But what I have to say comes out of the Bible and it made you enough to get up on a cold Sunday morning in January. Hallelujah, January is finally here. And uh, you came anyway. And by the way, this is a great crowd for a minus, what is it, minus what this morning? 30s? This is a great crowd for a minus 30. Get in your car and drive all the way here. And I have something to say. And so you had took enough effort to get up and pray and drink your coffee and get in your car and come. And so the message needs to be heard. And I'm going to parallel this loud voice and this strong angel with the messengers down here on earth are called preachers. And every Christian is to be a preacher. Every creature needs a preacher. Every creature needs. And you are responsible, junior high person. Senior high person, retired pensioner, over 55 plus person, you are to be a preacher to every creature and get the gospel to the lost and the dying. Say amen now if you can. If you can't, don't say amen now. Don't say amen if you can't. Is there a burning, flaming hell where people really go? Then I need to open my mouth and so do you. Every creature needs a preacher. Somebody needs to hear 
what you have to say. I look at Adrian back there. I don't think how many people, at least 15, 20 men, truck drivers got saved because he started bringing them in. Every creature needs a preacher. There's somebody you can bring. I'm so blessed that Dexter and his family brought that uh, man and his children to our special meetings, and it was so nice to meet them and have them in our church service. And so it's always a blessing. Every creature needs a preacher. Preaching was always intended to be loud, strong, hang on to your high heels and purses, Preaching was always meant to be loud, strong, and masculine. Now throw your rocks. You want me to say it again? Loud, strong, and masculine from the pulpit in leadership. That's what, why do you think men don't go to church anymore? Because it's been effeminized in so many areas. I know where the front row is, and I can sit there and say amen. It's okay. We don't need emasculated pulpits, and we don't need dudes in skinny jeans drinking soy boys, okay, and with their tips, their tinted tips, two, two octaves too high to sing in leading songs. I like guys who turn wrenches leading songs. I like guys who drive trucks leading songs. You understand? It's important. Strong angel, loud message in glory. I guess the preaching's loud in heaven. It ought to be a little bit loud down here. Comparing scripture with scripture. We learned this in Sunday school. Comparing scripture with scripture. Now listen, you watch this. Everybody likes it when I start doing Dr. Feelgood voice. That's what Joe Biden does. And he's plastic. And he's senile. <laughs> Do you understand? Slick, smooth, Smooth words and fair speeches is not the message of the day. Okay? We need some preaching. And so, so my first point this morning is this, a vociferous proclamation. You say, Pastor Pittman, what in the world does vociferous mean? It means loud. That, look it up later. I did. Vociferous means loud. A vociferous proclamation. He is saying, who is worthy in heaven? Who's worthy to open the seals? Preaching was always intended to be in such a fashion. Let's compare scripture with scripture. Look at Isaiah chapter 58 and verse number one on the wall. Read it and think about the words. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Now God is comparing a trumpet to a loud voice. And show my people, I know it's the Jews in Isaiah, but you are God's people in the New Testament. And show, there's your lesson learned, there's your devotional application. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Now, we're not the house of Jacob, we're the house of God. We're the church after the cross. But we still need to know what our transgressions are. Hey, it's not okay to mutilate children. The transgressions of the day. It's not okay to go to Jeffrey Epstein's island and still hold office. It's not okay. It's not, can I get one more amen? It's not okay. It's not okay to get high as a kite vaping and smoking weed. Somebody say amen now. It ain't okay. It ain't okay to get drunk as a skunk on Saturday and stand up and teach Sunday school Sunday morning. Somebody say amen. Show my people, my people, their transgressions. That's what preaching does. Now, I confess, I confess that our movement in the 70s and the 80s told a lot of stories and hollered a lot. But you know what, man? Bless God, we've grown up a little bit in our Baptist churches. We do go chapter by chapter sometimes. We do explain the whole scripture in context. And we do lay it out on the table where you can get it. You can't tippy toe around the transgressions of the people. You've got to put it waist high over the plate where the people can see it and get it and knock it out of their lives. That's what preaching does. Uh, some of the hardest, meanest sermons were some of the most life changing sermons in my life. I got some of the junk out, I got some of the filth out. And sometimes that's just what we need. We have mollycoddled our society. We're allowing things to happen to our children. They're being mutilated by your taxpayers' dollars. Right? And we call that okay. It's not okay. That's the transgressions of the people. We don't read our Bibles. That's a transgression of the people. 
You don't read your Bible. Some of you, I don't know who you are. It doesn't matter. God knows. Somebody say amen. God knows. If you can agree with that, say amen. God knows you don't read your Bible. God knows you do read your Bible. And sometimes you need that. Let them know what their transgressions are. There's your application to your life. This message up in heaven by the angel asking the challenging question, who is worthy? Comparing scripture to scripture, let's look at Isaiah 11 this morning, 11.2. Isaiah 11.2, it goes on, it talks about uh, after that, into verse number three, the Bible says, and no man in heaven nor on earth and under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. John is, is sad because nobody can unlock the seals because no man was found worthy to open the book and, and to read the book, neither to look therein. And one of the elders, that's the 24, saith unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book. Hallelujah. Behold, the lamb is worthy to open the book. And he opened the book and the seven seals thereof. Verse 6, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, those four beasts, what were they? There was one of a man, one of an eagle, one of an ox, and help me, what was the other one? A lion, a lion and a calf, and a man, yes, the ox and the calf are the same. And so, um, and the root of David and prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. And verse 6, and I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns. So this lamb, this image of this lamb appears in the center here. It's a picture of Jesus. We know Jesus does not have wool. We know he does not have, uh, uh, does not uh, bah like a lamb, and he does not walk on four legs. This is imagery here. Now, it could appear to John that way, but always take the Bible literally. We know the Lord Jesus Christ is not a four-legged critter on the farm. It had the lamb, the sacrifice, it had been slain, having seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. The seven spirits of God. Let's compare scripture with the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the spirit, uh, the spirit of the Lord, one. And the spirit of wisdom, two. And the spirit of understanding, three. And the spirit of counsel, four. And the spirit of might, five. And the spirit of knowledge, six. And the spirit of fear, seven. The seven spirits of the Lord are there in this setting. See this visual narrative as it happens and it unfolds. And the spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. We need more knowledge. We need more counsel. We need more might. We need to fear the Lord just a little bit more. But this proclamation was um, vociferous. It was loud and it was decried well up in heaven. And it's all right to get a little bit loud. I saw, and now, now I wish I would implemented what I'm about to describe to you in my sermon this morning. Um, hey, where's Josh? Josh, are you upstairs? Okay. You remember that, that clip you sent me? about those people, they had people singing and, and doing acrobats on ropes and coming in and they called this stuff church. It was like watching one, one of those, uh, the Newsies. How many saw the Newsies years ago? The Newsies musical, it was a children's musical like something and there was another one, uh, all these dancing musical, something you'd see off Broadway or something. It was almost like a musical. Josh, where are you? Where'd you go? I found one worse. I saw people getting so super loud and there was thousands of young people in church. And this guy's getting loud and he's saying, ah, praise him, uh, praise him. Uh, and the young people are screaming like it's a punk rock mosh pit in the 70s with Sid Vicious in the company. And they're going, and praise him, he's worthy, praise him. I said, God ain't in that junk. You don't know God very well if you think God's in that junk. He ain't in that stuff. Right, Brielle? Amen? Amen, Brielle? Say amen. Amen. Good. See, I can get one spirit-filled person to say amen if you won't. I'll find one. I'll always find one. Listen, and so that noise was so loud, but it was so satanic, and it was cloaked supposedly in the name of Jesus it has to not only be loud and uh, declarative, it needs to be scripturally based. So, and I pray, and I hope that I'm growing in my preaching. I hope that I'm getting more biblical in my preaching. I'm hoping I have better content and application and depth. And I hope that I'm more spirit-filled. All is vain unless the spirit, 
of the Holy One comes down no matter how loud you are. The Spirit of God has to come down. And so up in heaven, they're having this question, and of course the Spirit of the Lamb of God has opened the seal. Now I'd like to you look with me at verse number 8, for there are now vials full of prayer. Please pick up the reading with me, vials full of prayers. Let's read verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, even seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. So these are jettisoning from heaven, the portals of heaven, down into the four corners of the earth. Verse 7. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors. Now look at this. Let the Bible define the Bible. Harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. So what are these golden uh, vials full of odors? What does the Bible say they are? They are the what? One more time. Prayers of the saint. There are vials full of prayers. Now, what's a vial? Vial is an old word. We use vial in a bad sense. There's a different spelling, of course. It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, but there's a vial. Let's look at the definition of the word vial on the wall. The Bible says this. The vial uh, is a vessel, uh, a vessel of a small or moderate size used for holding liquids in later use. Um, a small glass bottle, a file is how it used to be spelled. That's from the Oxford English Dictionary. It comes original uses from the 1300s era is when it started using this word. Now listen, I don't know how, and I know that Jesus isn't a woolly little lamb and walks around on four legs, but always take the Bible literally. And I don't know how when born-again Christians pray from their heart, from their heart to God, that somehow those emotions and those words and those thoughts ascend beyond the universe and are captured up in heaven and put into vials. But I'm telling you right now, I believe God bottles up prayers. I really do because of what I read, that, that God does put those prayers in vials. And then they're opened. And you know what? They're an odor, and I guarantee you it's a sweet odor because they made it into heaven. Now watch this. Here's your picture. You need a picture? Here's your picture. In a marriage, a husband represents Christ. In a marriage, the wife represents the church. And when the bride opens her glass vial, he goes like this. That smells good. That's a blessing. So somehow... Your hard emotions and your words make it up there to heaven if you're in fellowship with him, if you're in prayer to him, and they make it to glory. And that's how God sees your prayers, almost like a bottle of perfume. Wow. He is so good. He bottles up your prayers, your heartaches, your needs, your desires, your wants for your kids, for your spouse, for your lost friends. He bottles the prayers of the saints. Let's look at another verse on the wall, if we can, about being things that are bottled up. Look at Psalms 56, verse 8, comparing Scripture with Scripture again. Thou tellest my wanderings, and put thou my tears into thy bottle, God's bottle, are they not in thy book? Somehow, when I'm brokenhearted, when you're hurting, when the doctor gives you the news, and the tears begin to flow, God sees that, and he bottles those tears up there somehow. I don't understand it. It's hard to understand in some ways, but I do believe it. I believe it with all my heart that God bottles our tears of the heartbroken mother, of the abandoned man or woman, or the parent whose child has ran away. When your tears fall, God Sees that you have to believe that. Let that give you comfort and hope that God is hearing and capturing your prayers. And they're not in vain. They're not in vain. So we need to realize that our prayers ascend up into heaven. And God captures them in bottles. Vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints. Verse number 8. 
But not only are our prayers there, not only is there a strong message up there, not only is our prayers bottled up there, but number, uh, uh, verse number nine, I want you to see the voices of thousands. Let's read together. Let's reread verse nine. Ready, begin? Uh, just follow along quietly. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, amen, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us, come on now, redeemed us to God by thy blood what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount i know nothing but the blood of jesus do you understand mainline protestant denominations today will not sing about the blood and their reverends will not talk about the blood and they will not preach about the blood our religion is a bible religion and our religion is a blood-stained religion and your salvation is a blood-washed salvation. Now listen, I, I don't have a lot of, uh, uh, I don't have a lot of um, um, in experience in this environment, but I have done some butchering, right Shane? I have killed, I have cut open some carcasses. I have cut open some moose and some bear and things like that. Not as much as Shane and some of the other people in this room, but I have, killed, I have killed some animals, I have opened some animals, and I have seen the blood flow out. And there's something about blood pouring out of a, 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 a carcass. And just, it, your human instinct says, don't look. You know why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood, and the life is going away, and the life is going, that's what makes you look away. It's not only the grossness of it, it ew, it's the life is leaving it, and you don't want to see that. But you see, if the life didn't leave Jesus, you wouldn't be on your way to heaven. You wouldn't have a blood-bought salvation. And hallelujah for the lamb that is worthy. And he has, uh, by his blood, he has saved our souls. He has given us eternal life. But not only do I want you to see it, by the way, uh, by the way, the blood-bought salvation is for everyone. Now, I, I'm going to step on some toes, but there's no denying this. You can't argue this unless you lie through your teeth. In the 1800s, the Mormon church, I'm going to do it this way. James, Nyandika, stand up. Ezekiel's not here today. Ngaze, stand up, please, and the girls. Oh, so I'm not looking for anyone else. Anyone else? Okay, that's it. You, and Ezekiel will be here. The Mormon church said that these people did not have souls. That's straight out of hell. Somebody say amen. amen. Did you know the Mormon church used to teach that? Now they do have, they do have members that are of the uh, uh, black race. They do have some African members in the Mormon church. But originally, the original teaching, they changed the rules because they knew they were going to get in trouble. But you know what my Bible says? I don't care what the book of Joseph Smith says. I want to know what God says. And God says out of every kindred. You're from Kenya, right? Every Kenyan. You're from Nigeria, right? Every kid. Well, the girls are not. They're from London. They have a fine Cotney accent. But anyway, every kindred. God wants everybody to get saved. And there's no room for white supremacists, Asian supremacists, by the way. Everybody thinks it's only white guys that are racist. I'm telling you, some folks around the world are far more racist than the people I know, and they're not white. Every tongue, every tribe, every kindred. He wants people from Africa saved. Go ahead, sit down. Okay, where's, man, I'm slumming today, boy. Roberto's not here? Hey, Hesmar, Papa Aki, is he here? No, okay, all right, stay up. All right, where's Abby? Abby, you can stand up. Where's your mom? I know your mom's here. I saw her here. Go ahead, stand up. Okay, every tribe, every tongue, como esta? Told ya, I'm good. I could be an interpreter for the UN, I'm so good. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's true. And I could lead songs better than Jason, it's I'm so good. All right, anyway, it's just such a sin to lie in church. Listen, God wants people that speak Spanish that are from South America and Central America to be saved. Every tribe, every tongue, every kindred. Can somebody say amen? 
He wants these people to get saved. And he wants them in your life because you're going to be in heaven with them forever. And that includes you folks who are not uh, what we would call pasty pale European milky white like moi. But you better get used to Hesmar. You better get used to the gringo. He's going to be in heaven too, buddy. He's going to be there too. God doesn't only give salvation to the Spanish speakers, right? You like gringos, right? Where is she? There, you like, he likes gringos, right? Yes, yes. Okay, it's all right. God wants every t- tribe, every tongue, every kindred. All right, anyone, if you're from Asia, go ahead and sit down. You guys can sit down. You're Asian background. You were born in Asia. Your parent, your mom. Do I have to spell this out? <laughs> if, you're, if you come from Asia, you need to stand up now. If your mother and father are from Asia, you're born in Canada, you need to stand up now. Every tongue, it doesn't matter if you're from China, yes, China, Philippines, everybody, Asia. Listen, God wants everybody saved. Everybody needs to be saved. It doesn't matter if you're from Af- your people are from Africa, your people are from Asia, your people are from Europe. It doesn't matter. God wants everyone to be saved. That's why we're having a missions conference next weekend. You people think a Filipino people need to hear the gospel? Huh? I'll try over here. Maybe you can get louder than the rest of them. Do you, you think Filipinos need Jesus? Good man, Dexter. Okay, you can sit down. You think people who speak Spanish need Jesus? You better believe it. You think people in Africa need Jesus? You better believe it. You think people whose ancestors came from Europe need Jesus? You better believe it. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Every kindred is going to be in heaven. Every tongue, Tagalog and Spanish and your village language and tongue. That's not goo goo gaga like Ke- uh, Kenneth Copeland does. That's talking about languages and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our God. Woo wee. Made us, the born again Christians that are washed by his blood in verse number nine. Kings and priests. We are kings. Not Brian and Cheryl kings, but we are kings. We're all going to have your last name someday. We're all going to have the kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth as kings and priests. Whoa. It's easy to read and understand. It's just hard to believe that Jim Wally's going to be a king. Amen. It's hard to believe that Rush is going to be a priest, maybe. Maybe. Maybe a king. Who knows? God knows, right? It's easy to believe Jessica is going to be a queen, right, Jessica? Right, Jessica? Something powerful about that name, I'll tell you what. Anyway, so we are going to be kings and priests on earth in the future. It does matter how you live, and it does affect your reign and your usefulness in eternity. Verse 11, and I, John the Apostle, beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels, not a few, many angels, round about the throne. And the beasts, those, those wild, fantastic beasts that we read about, and the elders, the 24 elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, there's that volume again, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain, a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That is what they're going to be saying in eternity for eternity. That's what you and I will be doing for eternity. Even the quiet people will get loud. Even Louise will get loud. Even uh, Jason Whiteside will get loud. Even Sean will get loud. Even Jim Waldy will get loud. All you quieter, reserve, even Mark will get loud. All you quieter, reserved people, when you get up to glory and it's time to give praise, you're going to open up your mouth, you're going to lift it wide, and you're going to say, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. Everyone will be there. And that's why we, do you understand that? When he says every kin, tongue, and tribe, and nation, when you and I put money 
and we give it to world missions and we send it to the missionaries in South Africa we support and we put the money in the plate. Help me, Sam. I'm looking for, do we have one? Uh, Weeb, Weeb in South America, I got it. And we send money to South America. South Americans will get saved. And we send money to Richard Allen out in BC. <laughs> can you believe people in British Columbia can be saved? <laughs> They can, right, Sean? <laughs> they can even get saved in British Columbia. Listen to me. And we send money? That's part of that crowd. Do you understand? You just read about the people that we have reached. Every tongue, every nation, every tribe will be getting saved. Do we have a missionary in the Philippines? I'm struggling right now. Malazo, that's right. I'm sorry. I just drew a blank. Brother Malazo. All the people that we gave him money to give him food and clothing so he can pay his rent and food and all that. He goes there. He wins people to Christ and those are the tongues and the nations and the tribes that are described in chapter number 5 in verse number 9 and 10. And when they all get up there, when we all get to heaven, we'll all be saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain because we're here because of him to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in the, them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four be said amen. And we'll just be getting started. And I told you last week the young fella said, Pastor Pittman, that sounds a little bit boring. And I said, Josh, have you considered the alternative? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Worthy is the lamb. Is he worthy in your life? Is he the center of your life? And I'd like you to stand to your feet with me if you would, please, with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, being in a heart and a mindset of prayer. I know it was a little loud this morning, but sometimes we just need to get there. And sometimes we have to get there a little bit loud. But I'd like to ask this morning, if you are bought by his blood, as we learned in verse number nine, if you're washed in his blood and you're a child of God and you are on your way to heaven and you know it and you believe it, and there was a time before today you asked him to save your soul, can you testify with a raised right hand? Can you testify by putting your right hand up to the sky? I'm not ashamed. I'm not lazy. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not... Uh, preoccupied, I am testifying with a raised hand that I know him and I love him and he's mine and I'm his forever. And I'll be there with the kindred and the tongue. You may put your hands down. I know that's not everybody. There's some that couldn't raise their hand. How many here would say, Pastor Pittman, I'm, I didn't raise my hand, but I, I know someday I need to get saved. Even if it's not today, I know I need to get saved so I can get to heaven someday. Would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand this morning? Yes, sir. God bless your honesty. Anyone else? Anyone else this morning? There's, you may put your hand down in the back. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Raise your hand. There was one man. Anyone else? Anyone else? This morning, there's always one or two. May God bless you. How many here would say, Pastor Pittman, it's time to get serious about this reward business, kings and priests. And the first step for me is salvation. And then the next step is to grow, is to be baptized. I'd like to be baptized. Some of you are afraid of water. I even baptized a brother this week that was afraid of water. But you know what? We overcome our fear through the power of God. And we do that which pleases him. Anyone say, I need to be baptized? I've, I've been putting it off, putting it off. I'm not scripturally baptized. I've been poured on my head, and that's not baptism. I've been sprinkled, and that's not baptism. How many here would raise your hand and say, I need to be biblically baptized by the Bible way? Would you raise your hand this morning? Anyone? Several have spoken to me recently last month say, I need to join a scriptural church. These are the first steps of growth. Anyone who say, I need to join a church? Anyone at all say, I need to join the church? Would you raise your hand? Yes, sir. God bless you. If you need to join the church, there's no more hesitation. Come forward this morning. Anyone else this morning? I need to join this church. I'm saved. I'm baptized. I need to join the church. Would you raise your hand this morning? I need to get plugged in. How many of you say, I'm, I'm a member, but I'm not plugged in? I'm a member, but I need to do more. I'm a member. I need to grow. Would you raise your hand? I need to do more. I need to get involved more. Surely there are some today that need to be more involved. Would you raise your hand? The Holy Spirit's spoken to you. Yes, sir. God bless you. Those uh, folks who need to join the church, come forward. Those who uh, need to get it right. How many here would say the Holy Spirit spoke to you about sharing your faith or something else? Something else. God spoke to you about someone else or something else. Yes, God bless you. Many hands are up. All right. Haley's going to begin to play. If you need to come, would you come at this time? As she begins to play, come forward. 
If you need to be saved, you want to come forward, come talk to me. Don't be afraid. Right now, people are coming. There's so many people thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about, if you need to be saved and you want to, come on down here and talk to me. I will talk to you. How many of you would say, I need to join the church this morning? I need to join the church this morning. Why don't you come on down and pray and, and meet with the Lord and make a declaration. Amen. Come and pray. Young people, surrender your lives to the Lord. I need to join the church. I need to join the church. Come in to join the church. Have a seat right there, right there. All right. So, some have already come to join our church family. I think this is about the best place in the province to go to church, but that's just my opinion. And it's not because of me. It's because what God does in this place. It's because the book that rests upon our pulpit. It's because the Holy Spirit has blessed us with salvation. Because salvation is more than being good. It's, it's Jesus. And I believe Jesus is in this place. And I believe he's honored in this place. Come forward to be saved today. Don't be afraid. Everyone would rejoice. Only the devil would not want you to be saved. Do you, uh, do you want to go forward today? All right. This is Jim and Wendy Zabreski. Why don't you folks come on, stand up. Come stand here with me. Okay. Jim 